Wait a minute, why is it still going? Did we just cause some kind of a bug? Here's what I liked about the Skme 2091 after wearing it non-stop for one whole week. First of all, I absolutely love this double keeper, which is the first one I've ever had in my collection with two separate pieces, and I completely changed my mind on it from the unboxing video, which is here if you missed it. The reason being is that with a double keeper, it prevented a common issue I faced during my beach volleyball games. If we have both keepers at one side, you'll see what it's like with my other watches. Just a slight amount of pressure there and we get this big bulge and the strap actually comes undone quite easily. But with this nice double keeper, you can actually dedicate one of them to slide down halfway and it completely prevented that from happening. So I'm a big fan of this feature. I must say though, this comes as a bit of a trade-off as the added bulk definitely gets in the way when I'm typing and I can feel it quite prominently on my wrist. One thing unusual with this SKME is that it takes a little bit more effort to swap between 12 and 24 hour mode. On a normal Casio, such as my Bumblebee here, one of my absolute favorites, to do so we just press the button at the bottom right once and we're now in 24 hour mode. However, with the SKME, you actually have to hold down the adjustment button enter the setting menu like so, and then scroll across a few times to make this adjustment. Now, the reason that that is the case is because this bottom right button, as many viewers let me know in the unboxing video, is actually used to swap between time and date. So thank you everyone for pointing that out. Other than this one hiccup, the SKME 2091 was extremely intuitive to set up and I was very happy with the user experience. All of the buttons now perfectly match what you'd expect on a Casio. You cycle with the mode button like so, and the top button moves numbers down, the bottom number moves them up. Just perfect. And this is contrary to the last SKME G-Shock that I purchased, the SKME 1628, which just had to try and be a little bit different and mix up these buttons, but all that did was cause confusion. For example, in my collection update video, which is here if you missed it, I discussed that I accidentally ruined my experiment on the timekeeping of this watch by pressing a single button, which isn't where you'd expect it to be on a Casio. So overall, it's a really good decision by SKME to just accept the fact they're copying Casio and just embrace it. So if you're a Casio owner who's never owned a SKME, this is a great one to start with because everything is where you'd expect it, including the backlight button. So if you would like to pick one up, I'll be leaving the best price link I could find for you in the description below. And speaking of the backlight for this model, I wouldn't say that it's a crazy good backlight, but you can at least adjust it between one and three seconds, which I would highly recommend doing as one second is nowhere near enough. Bubble suggests that you ram that like button and also reminds you to stick around <laughs> to the end of the video because you're going to get to help decide between the next Casio watch that we wear for watch of the week. Another feature that I love about this watch is with the countdown timer, which I believe has been implemented better than some of the Casio watches that I've reviewed recently. The SKME allows you to make adjustments not only to the minutes, as you'll see there, but we can also scroll down to the seconds and make adjustments there. And as someone who attends board game nights, I use this watch to set timers. And some of the games need just a 40 second timer. This watch can handle it. But with these Casio watches, while yes, we can make adjustments down to the one minute level, if we try, try and scroll across to the seconds, you'll see that we don't have the option of doing so, which is quite limiting. So props to SKME for letting us make adjustments down to the second. I also loved the straps on the SKME 2091. I am not joking when I say that these things really are luxuriously comfy. It just feels like an absolute cloud to wear on your wrist. I did not experience any discomfort over the week that I was wearing this watch. Although I will say that I do have my doubts about the longevity of it, and I would like to see long-term how it holds up against a G-Shock strap, which seem a little bit more resilient. I also love that there is absolutely no confusion about which number the analog hand is pointing to. As you can see, we are clearly pointing to the 29 at 429. But once the seconds reach the zero marker, you'll see the hand actually click over to the 30 rather than being ambiguously halfway stuck between them. Let's see it make its move. Boom. There you go. Nice and clear. 
I'm also a big fan of the little weekday subdial complication, which they copied off the GA2100 series G-Shock. It is quite refreshing to see this little hand and know that it's pointing to M for Monday. Whereas as a digital watch owner, I'm used to just seeing the text up there. Another little advantage I'm not used to as a predominantly digital watch wearer is the loom on the hands here, because even without needing to press the backlight button, at night I could often tell what time it is just by looking at the illumination on those hands. And lastly guys, I love how absurdly affordable this watch is compared to the watch it copied the GA2100 series. The price difference really is astronomical. This is a fantastic entry level watch to people who are curious about the GA2100 Casio X series, but don't quite want to spend that kind of money. And I fit exactly into that category. I really wanted to try that watch, but didn't want to break the bank. So I'm so pleased that Skme came out with the 2091. And remember guys, links to all the watches and parts I show you in my videos will always be provided in the description below. Now let's get into the things that I didn't like about this watch. <laughs> Honestly, these buttons are too easy to press. Whenever I went to cycle modes using the mode button, I'd often accidentally press the opposite button, which happens to be the backlight, and doing so at the same time does nothing. So you had to be careful where you brace your finger when swapping modes. Secondly, the instructions for the SCME 2091 mislabeled it as the SCME 2100 series. And uh, if you'll remember, that's actually the model number. Where is it? Here we go. See, they've called it the SCME 2100. And as you know, the G-Shock model that they copied this off is the GA2100. So it kind of seemed like they weren't even trying to make it unique at all. But then guys, I actually looked it up and the SCME 2100 is actually a separate model to the 2091. It's just a basically different colorway and I think it might have a metal bezel. I put up a picture on screen for you here. Next up, I have to mention that I did pick up some scratches on the acrylic lens of the display here. But to be fair, guys, there's no way that SCME could afford to use a more resilient mineral glass on a watch at this extremely affordable price point. Next up, I don't believe that the minute hand has the ability to go backwards. So let's actually give that a test. I noticed that when I was setting the watch up, that it only seemed to be able to go one way. So let's go to the minutes here and let's maybe move that back to 503 instead of 504 and see what it does. Yep, check it out. It has to do a whole lap just to get back to where it wants to be. Wait a minute, why is it still going? It's on its second lap. Uh, we just caused some kind of a bug. Any day now, ask me. Actually, wait, 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 let's try and recover this. If I go to adjust it again and set the minute hand forward by one. Oh, there we go. So it's now done its rotations and back to 504. Next up, it's the double keeper, which I quite like overall, but I found that the part that you use to secure the end of your strap, because of the tapered design of the strap, it gets all bent and misshapen by the time you get it up far enough. So. This uh, top keeper probably needs to be a little bit wider. Next up, it's the lack of a seconds hand on the dial. Now, as someone who prefers to read digital time, I don't really mind. But for those of you who prefer analog, just be aware that you are going to have to read a combination of analog and digital if you'd like to know how many seconds have elapsed. Next, I noticed that the minute hands don't always align with the minute markers. Let's take a closer look. It's supposed to be 516. Oh, hang on, it's just, it's just popped over a bit. But check it out, there's no way that that is lined up to the 16. Remember the 15 is that big one where the three would be. 16 is just there, but it's already lower than that. Now here comes uh, 517, let's see what it does. In my opinion, it's already pointing there. See what I mean? So it's making these small movements, but uh, not really lining up properly. Now I want to mention the backlight here because although it is quite impressive for the analog hands as we discussed, uh, for the actual backlight for the digital display it really leaves a lot to be desired. 
that it, see how it kind of makes those digits uh, negative when you use it. And additionally, you probably can see it on my hand. Look at that. It absolutely lights up the entire room due to the poor angle of the LED for the backlight. All right, time for a backlight test. One, two, three. Whoa, that ain't right. But other than that, I've kind of noticed that the digital display can be hard to read at certain angles. See how it's almost doubling up right now and becoming blurry as we tilt it? So not ideal there. I just don't think that these SKMEs have quite as quality uh, digital displays as with Casio's. Next up is the alarm. Now, let's do a test here. I mean, relatively speaking, it is pretty loud. But I don't know, I just found myself constantly sleeping through the alarms on the skimmies. And uh, maybe it's because I've been wearing the sleep headset, which we reviewed here almost every night. And actually, check it out. I got a new one because you wouldn't believe it. The one that I showed you in that last video actually broke within a week of showing it to you guys. So I've got a replacement and that one's going fine. Now, despite these issues, I am still very happy with the value offering of this watch and am overall delighted to have this in my collection. But talk to me, what do you guys think about the SKME 2091? I'd love to hear your thoughts below. Now here's the part where you come in. I need your help deciding between two new awesome Casio watches to wear for Watch of the Week. On the left, we have the Casio AE1500, which I've been receiving a ton of comments to wear lately. And on the right, we have the Casio F105W, a similar model to the classic F91 with a better backlight. Now, before you cast your vote on these watches, make sure you are subscribed so you can keep voting in the future. And also, we are so close to hitting 5,000 subscribers, so a big thank you to everyone. To cast your vote, head over to the Goat Reviews YouTube profile, click on the community tab, and there you'll see a poll I've created for you to cast your vote between these two awesome watches. By the way, I usually run these community polls for one week, but even if you're watching this video weeks later, it's still worth checking out that community tab because we might have another active poll that you can vote in. An enormous thank you to our YouTube members and Patreon members for supporting the channel as part of the Goat Crew. Here's a link to our Discord server, which contains our wrist check channel, where you can come and show off whichever watch you're wearing to the community. Here's some more great content for you to watch next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next review.